How you doing everybody? Randy Richard in the shop. So I'm approaching uh, my one year anniversary of doing videos on YouTube. Uh, the 18th, uh, I think that's the date exactly, of July. And I want to thank everybody. I, I am uh, amazed at uh, the uh, generosity of people, the uh, comments, the uh, nice comments I get, the um, suggestions I get, which are, are great. So I can't use a lot of them sometimes because of the project thing, but uh, I appreciate the comments in, in every way. A lot of constructive criticism, which is just fine. And uh, thank you. But to all the subscribers, uh, I'm almost uh, up to 5,000 subscribers. And uh, I'm going to keep doing videos. Uh, I've done it for, like I said, a year now. So uh, we'll just keep on going. I have lots of projects in mind. And I uh, hope you guys enjoy. Uh, we've come, come a long ways. I think my videos have gotten better. And I have some more ideas for improvement. So... Uh, I'm going to keep working on that. Uh, today is uh, what I call a firewood picture frame. So we're going to do that project and get it done. And I uh, hope you guys enjoy. It's uh, using a piece of firewood out of a wood pile. Just not my wood pile, but a family relative's wood pile. And uh, from the country of Don Cossett <laughs> up there in Oregon. So... Uh, uh, that's what we're going to do. Uh, anyway, thank you guys. Thank you for your support. Thank you for everything. Uh, uh, it's, it, it, it's been great. It really has. Uh, I'm very enjoyable. Met a lot of great people also. So, uh, so let's, uh, let's get the picture frame done. Thanks. Over here at the bandsaw. This is a raw log right out of the wood pile. Uh, juniper from Oregon, uh, the Mountain uh, Sisters area. So we're just gonna cut it right down the middle into halves using a four tooth, uh, four TPI half inch wide blade there. And we're gonna Join off one side so we have a flat surface. There we go. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to cut this down to about, about an inch and a half thick. Inch and a half. Yeah, about an inch and a half. We're just going to, so we have two flat sides. And then what I did is I stacked this wood up uh, and I let it dry for uh, about two weeks. Uh, it's pretty dry already, but I wanted to get it to so it would just uh, uh, get the warps out. Let it do what it wants to do after cutting it. Here's the other side so you can see uh, a little more what's going on there. Just, just cleaning up some of the bark. Then we're going to run it through the planer. Uh, and then I, I should say, then I stacked it, uh, stickers and let it sit for a couple weeks. I want it to normalize to the uh, moisture content of the wood uh, and the humidity here. Uh, it's very dry here. But I wanted to get it uh, so it normalized. And we, we planed up both sides smooth. I had uh, enough here to build about three picture frames. At least that's what I'm hoping for. So that's a 15 inch uh, key to planer model 2040, I think it is. And, uh, well, I've had that thing a long time. So it's been a great planer. So the 
And now what I'm doing is I'm going to – so this is after it's been sitting, I guess, uh, two weeks or so. And then uh, now I'm marking it out uh, just for a rough line down the middle. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to cut them again here on the bandsaw. Just a rough line so they're basically two equally massed pieces. It may not look in the middle there, but I was using the wide side eye in it. For the for the center of the mass kind of thing, and just hit free cutting it right down the line. This wood is, was fairly dry, so it really cut very very easily. Uh, so it goes pretty fast. But even cutting it here, it relieved more stresses, so the boards did uh, get little yahoos in them, you know, when you cut it. Uh, so then what I did is I jointed off that cut edge also so it's smooth. Smooth and flat. You can see a little bit of the hump in it there. Some were worse than others, so they all got the same treatment. Because that's going to be the inside face around the around the picture itself and these pieces are about oh they're not quite three feet long probably 30 inches long now we're we're cutting the rabbit out for the picture where it's going to sit it will sit back about a quarter of an inch. I'm using a depth gauge there um, to set my blade height, or blade height gauge, I guess you saw it, made by Bridge City Tool Works. So we're just making, we just make two cuts. Uh, it will, the picture will have an overlap of about a quarter of an inch uh, around the picture when it sits in there. And it will have about a half an inch of... Uh, reveal uh, showing there uh, of the wood. So we cut that rabbit on all the pieces. You can do cut that rabbit in a lot of different ways. Uh, routers, shapers, router table. Uh, table saw is fast and easy. Set in the miter saw for a 45 degree angle. Or to miter all the corners. Now we're getting it marked out. This is a 12 by 16 uh, picture or painting. So we want a quarter inch on each side. And actually, what I do is I give it, a, I add an eighth of an inch. So there's about a 16th all the way around. So it drops in real easy. So that ends up being, you know, 15 and 3 eighths. That's my little uh, Bridge City Tool Works square there. I love those. I love those squares. Those are all Bridge City Tool Works squares. Uh, they're adjustable, so you can calibrate them, and uh, they're uh, very, very nice uh, tools. I've collected those over the years. Uh, you know, it's Christmas presents and things like that. It's a 45 degree square there. Having that 36 inch scale is uh, very, very nice uh, for measuring squareness of things and measuring off longer distances. There we go. All the miters are cut. Just check it. We don't care how the corners on the outside fit up. It's just about the inside, making it square. I'm checking for squareness just real quick before we uh, glue it up and, and nail it. 
You want those two measurements to be identical, those diagonals. Now I'm going to use some uh, 90 degree uh, angle clamps there. A little bit of glue. And we'll clamp them up, and then we're going to brad nail the corners also. Like I said, the, the outside uh, perimeter of the frame, I don't care how that really fits up. I mean, the, as far as overlap and things like that, it's all the nature of the uh, of the frame. But I, I do have to have the inside square so the picture fits. We we'll go all the way around. Then we let the glue uh, get good, good and dry, and I'll let it sit up for an hour, hour and a half, and uh, we'll we'll nail it here uh, after while well, in the clamps. You can see that rabbit there. I used an inch and five eighths uh, brad. That's a Senko brad nailer. So, oh. of course, if I had it in the frame, it'd be nice, huh? Oh, there we go. Oh, there we go. That nail shot right out of there, didn't it? Yeah, I, that one there. I don't know. I was off on my angle. Fortunately, it came out the back. I, I just clipped it off and pressed it in. There's the front. We do some uh, sanding to get things cleaned up. Sand the front and the back. Hand sand uh, the edges and uh, inside the frame a little bit just to make it nice and smooth. Danish oil finish. Love the Danish oil. Make sure you use a lint free rag. I use old t shirts. They're great. There we go. That's probably about three coats. I think it was three coats of finish. And uh, pull up my old branding iron. Now, this is an electric branding iron. You got to let it heat up real good. And then I always test it to make sure it's hot enough. And for each different kind of wood, it takes, I roll it. It. Uh, I always test it on the same wood I'm going to brand just so I know it's going to work. It's really hard to realign up if it doesn't come out too good. Different woods take different time periods. Some woods burn really fast, some don't. There we go. That one came out really well. There's the painting. Shoots River, Oregon. Beautiful there. Big river. Great fishing. Great. We always go during the salmon fly hatch. There we go. Dropped in perfect. Now this is a really old tool. Uh, got it from my grandfather. Has these little diamond points. There. Little diamond like diamond point staples. And they're they're not they're uh, just uh, like a galvanized steel, a little spring loaded there, hold them in, and it, it's for picture framing. And they'll shoot in there flush, right next to the picture. And if you ever need to take the picture out, you just kind of fold them up, or you can pull them out. But they're they're slick as can be. Just hold it right in there, snug, boom, done. It shoots those uh, shoots those little diamonds right in there. Well, that's one beautiful picture. She's she's a good artist. She's uh, she's getting old, but she's good. She's a good artist. <laughs> so we got the picture frame done. Uh, came out good. Uh, the painting was by my wife's aunt. She's a painter, and she painted a scene that is a scene on the Deschutes River where we go fishing. Uh, in that area where we camp 
Uh, it's beautiful there. It's a high desert and uh, fantastic river. I've been going there for almost 30 years and, and uh, fishing there and camping there. So it's a beautiful spot. We get together. Um, you've already, I've already shown you stuff, uh, you know, some scenes of camping and stuff. And I have some more f fishing clips I want to throw in. I just haven't done it yet. But thanks a lot for watching. Uh, the picture frame uh, project here was a fun, it's a fun project. I'm still going to build a couple more of those frames out of the same uh, juniper wood. Uh, so for a couple more of her paintings. And I uh, hope she'll enjoy. Uh, so uh, thank you guys. Thanks for watching. We'll see you later.